today I am so excited to show you one of my new favorite builds that I have ever done. I found this Instagram photo and I really love the shelving unit, but I couldn't source where it was from. The examples that are similar, I've linked down below in the description for pricing. Wow, evil looks right before I film. I work to feed you, by the way, with that little attitude. Okay. Just leave your mess, I'll clean it up, it's fine. So, we are gonna be hanging this from the ceiling. Yes, I am in a robe. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you wouldn't know that this is 24 seven. So I'm gonna make this, excuse me, I'm talking to, but I'm talking, but I'm speaking. This is gonna be, I'm gonna hang it six feet down. And I wanna put a, a mirror here, I think. So I'm only gonna do these about three foot. I gave you a shot. Three feet long or wide. You guys can obviously adjust this to your wall. You don't have to do it my way or the highway, people. You can make it two feet, one feet, whatever you want to do. Four feet, six feet, the whole wall, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do three because I want a moment for people to look at themselves if they're staying here because I have no full length mirror in here. Um, okay, so I'm going to do three feet. No, three feet. By six feet. And yes, my robe has paint on it. I, when I paint early in the mornings when I'm half awake. All I had to purchase was the wood, which was a two by eight by 12 piece that I got cut down into four three foot shelves at the store. So it saved me a step. This thicker rope, but you don't have to get as thick of rope. You can actually get thinner rope and you don't have to spend as much money. But for 46 feet of this, it was only 26 bucks. So it's actually not that bad in the grand scheme of things. And then two ceiling hooks that are going to support the weight of your shelves. This is the most crucial part. You have to have these weight bearing hooks. This can hold up to 90 pounds when inserted into wood and 60 pounds when through just drywall. So it has a drywall anchor and a little thing as you can see. So be sure to source the correct ones for the weight of the materials you are using. Another area that you can save money is not getting as thick of wood. I just really liked that chunky vibe that I saw in the photo, but you can get some simple pine. Just keep in mind if you're making longer shelves, you might want to add a middle section of rope so the wood doesn't bow down. To avoid completely thrashing my hands when I need to make these knots, I decided to soak the rope in hot water in fabric softener. I didn't do exact measurements, but let me tell you, it definitely smelled like body odor when I took it out and let it dry. So there's a little bit of an issue there. Um, so comment down some tips and tricks below to avoid that. Ah, that's hot. I gathered up some clamps, my speed square, a pencil, measuring tape. I made a jig that I ended up not using, so it was terrible. I have my power drill with a Forstner bit that is a little bit bigger than the width of my rope. That way I have a way to pull it through with ease once we make these holes into the pieces of wood for the shelves. You don't have to do these next steps. You do have to pull the staples out of the wood. So take a moment to do that. But I decided to go ahead and use my hand planer for the first time and just go over my wood to get all that rough grain off and get like a nice smooth piece of wood that I can just go in and sand. I did trim down all the sides to make it nice and just crispy clean, but this made me realize that my blade is a little off because the cuts were a little wonky. So I'm a little bit irritated that I need to go in and do that. But if you don't take care of your tools, your tools won't take care of you. I used my speed square to mark two inches in from each corner. That way I have a guideline obviously to go in and drill the four holes on each piece. I put a piece of scrap wood down then clamped it to the table, went ahead and drilled through that piece into the scrap wood piece. You're not gonna hurt the surface that you're working on. I did one hole into each corner of every piece of wood that I had. So that was about six, that is 16 holes, not about, come on, do the math, Rach. I grabbed my random orbital sander with some 80 grit and a 120 grit, a mask and my safety glasses and went outside and sanded my heart out. You guys are gonna absolutely hate me, but after all said and done, look at this wood, it's beautiful, right? It's completely smooth compared to the wood without planing and sanding and taking the time to care for it. Well, your girl <laughs> decided to just paint it white because I really liked that white on white. It just looks so crispy and clean. And when I show you the rest of my guest room, there's a lot of natural wood elements and I just felt like this would have been way too aggressive in addition to it. 
I am a home goods addict, so I have about 5,000 different kind of bags from them. And I had a ginormous one that fit this bucket perfectly to line it because it was crusty and I didn't want to deal with cleaning it. I let the rope drain out as much as possible, moved it into the bag, and then took it into my shower and just draped it. That way it could completely dry. The next day I sanded down the shelves where it was a little bit rough with a 320 grit if any like debris got into it overnight for whatever reason. I dusted those off then instead of adding a thick layer of paint I decided to touch up the areas with a flat white spray paint. While that dried, once again, I tied a knot and measured it, which was about three inches, because I'm gonna compensate when we start to space the shelves out. I folded that rope in half, cut it. Now we got two pieces, one for each side of our shelving unit. I taped the ends, that way it didn't fray while we were working with it and pulling it through the holes that we previously made into the wood. And once again, you're gonna fold those pieces in half. And I weighted them down with my handy dandy weights that I love so much and decided to E6000 it first together because we're gonna come back and wrap it and add a little bit of a detail. Falling in love is wonderful. Falling in love. I folded a skinnier piece of rope in half and had the loop going towards like the ends of the rope, not the little hook part that we're making. And then you just wrap it around itself, pull the excess piece of rope that you've been wrapping through the loop that is not covered up by the rope and pull the top piece and it will automatically like lock it in place. If, if that's confusing, just glue a little piece of rope and then wrap it all around and then glue the other piece where you want it to end. You can hang this up, you can lay it down, but I found this to be easiest when measuring out both sets of rope to make sure that they're equal when we start to add the pieces of wood. I've just put tape where I wanted to put the wooden shelves directly underneath the tape, not above, not on the tape, below it. I had to take into consideration the thickness of the wood I was using, how thick the knots are going to be in the space I would like available. 18 plus 4 is 18 plus 4, 19, 22, and 22 and a half. That's what it should taste. But when you measure out the other one, one will go up. When I had one side completed, spaced out exactly how I wanted it, I laid it out on my workshop table and just basically copy and pasted where that tape was to ensure that everything is as level as possible onto the other set of rope. I put my first shelf onto the table and clamped it in between two scrap two by fours. That way I just had some security when I wanted to make my first round of knots. Pulled all the rope through and just knotted where I told you before. The tape was setting right above the piece of wood and then I tied the knot to keep that piece of tape there. That was like my little guideline. I repeated that to the remaining shelves and you guys, <laughs> I instantly fell in love. This thing is probably one of the most badass things I've made and it doesn't really require that many tools if you don't do a couple of the steps, but I'm obsessed. Falling in love. Reference your install instructions for the ceiling hooks that you are using and be sure to take a moment to install them correctly. You do not want this thing falling out of your ceiling. There's something on my screen. Sorry guys. I tried to clean everything and do all the things, but it's still just on there. One side I was able to install a hook into a stud so it could hold 90 pounds and the other side I had to do the drywall option. I didn't have a stud, but that can hold up to 60 pounds. So that was great. Do we just do this? And how crooked? But that's pretty sick. On Dulcet Creative's Instagram page where this whole inspiration came from, actually I'm totally copying it basically exactly how it looks. I decided to unravel the bottom to give it that tasseled look. It's wonderful. Falling in love is wonderful.
All that there is left to do is decorate it and I am not the best interior decorator. I am just a interior decorator enthusiast. Is that such a thing? So I kind of just placed things, took a step back, took my time, but at the end of the day, I am so in love. I am so happy I decided to give this a go and execute it on my own versus purchasing it because I only spent, I actually spent $58, including two cans of spray paint that I didn't end up using. I mean, you can't beat that. The thing. I hope that you guys enjoyed this like Instagram ripoff DIY. I don't know what you want to call it, but I, that's exactly what I did. And I have no shame in my game because I am pumped. This is now an addition to my house. All right, guys, it is time for me to figure out my next DIY for you. So I will catch you next Wednesday.